Good morning, everybody. This is to Kang Dragon, and welcome back to Digimon Rise. So I thought Galamon was going to drop tonight, but he dropped last night instead. So there goes my plan to get this video out early. <laughs> but regardless, let's talk about Galamon and Rusty Tyranimon. So since they are all Roll Knights, I'm going to compare Galamon's stats with Omegamon and Alphamon. Now I'm also going to throw Rusty Tyranimon into the mix because he's in this banner too. And he has an ability that's kind of similar to Galatmon, but Galatmon does it way better. Now, let's begin. Looking at the stats, Galatmon has the lowest HP compared to Omega and Alpha. Galatmon's HP is at 5720, while Omega is at 7336, and Alpha is at 6860. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that Omega, he's an ultra-level Digimon, which is higher than Mega. So it's fine that his stats are greater than Gallatmon, but here we have Alphamon who has higher HP than Gallatmon. And Gallatmon, the way he looks, he's a knight, he's full of armor, he's supposed to be a tank too, isn't he? And Alphamon is a much better tank compared to HP. But Gallatmon's HP can be fixed with his main skill, which we'll go over in a little bit. Look at the power, Gallatmon has the highest power compared to other uh, brave Mega Digimon that we have in the game. Galatmon's power is at 4309, which is pretty high, but we compare it to Omegamon is not as high as his, but again, Omegamon is an ultra-level Digimon. His stats are going to be higher, so comparing it to Omegamon isn't really fair, so let's compare it to Alphamon instead, which he's at 3920. Galatmon has way more power than Alphamon, and Galatmon's supposed to be a quote-unquote tank too. So Galamon, in regards to power outweighs Alpha, but not as much Omega. Now going through the defense, his defense is 1339, which is okay. It's not as good as Alphamon, who's at 1584, but however, it is greatly better than Omegamon, who's at 1224, but Omegamon does have the damage limiter passive to help him with that. But as you can see, with his HP and defense, kind of low for Gallantmon, um, Alphamon is the clear contender to be more of a tank. But again, Galamon's main skill helps him with the bulk and helps him survive longer. And finally, going down to the speed, Galamon's at 27, that's decent, Alpha's at 8, and Omega's at 30. You could fix Alpha's speed with his plugins, so I think he'll be up to 27, I believe. So, in essence, if you have Alpha's plugins, it's on par with Galamon. If not, Galamon has more speed and the bulk with his main skill. So, now looking at Rusty Tyranimon side by side with Gallantmon, they have about the same stats. 5720 HP for both, 1339 defense for both, and 27 speed for both. The only difference is their power. Again, this shows that Gallantmon's power is higher than a normal Brave Mega's power. Gallantmon's at, again, 4309, while Rusty's at 3520. So, Galatmon here is the clear contender. If you're debating on who to pull, well, to be honest, you shouldn't be debating on who to pull. Pull for Galatmon. If you get Galatmon and you don't get Rusty, just stop. Rusty is not worth the chase. But if you get Rusty while going for Galatmon, it's okay. Now let's go through their abilities. So I want to put them in an even playing field. They're all going to be skill level one. I will mention uh, throughout this section on Galatmon's potential on skill level 10. But we're going to try to keep it in an even playing field. Looking at Gallimon, Gallimon's main skill, again, I've been mentioning this a lot. Now, this is where he gets his bulk. Gallimon's main skill, he does 460% damage to one enemy. He also increases his counter rate by 30% for two turns. But, here's his gimmick. It gives him a shield effect that bumps his HP up 4200 for five turns. This is pretty good. It's pretty cool. It gives him more bulk. It makes him more defensive. It's awesome. Comparing to Omegamon's main skill, where you can see the clear difference. Gallantmon is more defensive, while Omega is more offensive. Uh, Omega, 400% damage, two enemies, ignores block, double damage and crits, and access power of all allies. Now looking at Rusty Tyranimon's main skill, he does 340% damage to two enemies, while reducing their buffs for three turns, and decreases their defense by 20%. Now this seems good, but to be honest, it's kind of similar to Gallatmon's sub-skill. 
Granted, Gallimon doesn't reduce defense by 20%, but Gallimon does something much better. Now looking at Gallimon's subskill, he does 160% damage to 4 enemies. 4 enemies. Almost a full team. It's not much damage, but this is where he mixed up for it. He reduces their buffs of all those 4 enemies for 1 turn, and that does include passive. So, damage limiter, gone. Crit bonus, from bolt, gone. Protection, from passives, gone. What else? What, what else is gone? Oh, Gronkwagamon's defensive buff, gone, at least for a turn. So Gallimon basically sets up for your Omegamon to go ham, <laughs> which is it's pretty cool. On top of that, he also decreases their tech by 30%. Now, right now is Brave Week. Brave Digimon do not use tech stat, they use power stat. So the secondary effect is worthless right now, for the most part, but next week is Calm Week. And Gallimon has a buff all month. So you have Gallimon in your team who reduce everyone's buff and tech. Well, at least almost everybody's buff and tech for a turn. So that still gives you time to set up and it lowers your enemy's attack. Now looking at Omegamon's subscale, he does 250% damage to three enemies and reduces uh, their power resistance by 40%. Again, Omegamon is pure attacker. And we're looking at um, Rusty sub, damage to 3 enemies, 210, decreases the block rate of 3 enemies by 20. It's a basic sub skill. But again, Rusty Tournament's main gimmick is trying to reduce enemies' buffs. Granted, it's for 3 turns, while Gallantmon is 1 turn, but Rusty only hits 2 enemies, while Gallantmon hits 4. I think that's a good trade off. <laughs> that's, that's just me. And again, Gallantmon reduces tech by 30%. So, he's useful even after this week, while Rusty could just be useful this week, and that's it. And finally, the really cool part, the passive skill. Now we all know what Omega's passive is, so I'm going to skip Omega. want to go to Rusty first. Rusty disables electric shock to all enemies by 3 turns. It was good back in the day when you first released, but now we have Digimon who have that in the passive, plus extra stuff in the passive, like Alphamon. He has all the stun effects, shock, stun, paralysis, I uh, forget what else, freeze, I believe. Eh, on Rusty's passive. <laughs> but Gallimon's passive is pretty cool. He increases power of all brave allies by 30% for 2 turns, and increases his own crit by 30% for 2 turns. Gallimon, he's basically a defensive support. <laughs> he supports with his passive and his sub skill. And he keeps himself alive so his passive stays in effect with his main skill. Gallimon paired with Omega, Alpha, Bolt, with Ragulmon, increases crit with Ragul and Boltmon, increases his own crit with his passive, and his counter rate goes up with his main skill. He'll be hitting more often and he'll be hitting hard. <laughs> and with his sub skill, he could set up for your Omegamon to one shot the other Omegamon on your opponent's team. So, Gallimon's pretty cool. I really like him, and to be honest, I'll pull for him regardless because he's my favorite Digimon in the whole franchise. I love Tamers, and I'm gonna get him. <laughs> but real quick, I'm gonna show you how good he is skill level 10. Now, to get him skill level 10, that's completely up to you. I think he could be worth skill level 10, he, he looks really cool to go level 10. He does good damage. He has a good buff to himself. But let's go over it real fast. So skill level 10. Um, his main skill will do 650% damage. <laughs> to one enemy, yes. But 650% damage. On top with his buff. His own buff with his passive. And then his crit up. And depending on the other Digimon you have for his crit. He could potentially one-shot enemies that are not Omegamon. If you don't fire your your sub skill first. And on top of that, his shield effect goes up from 4200 to 6000 HP. And his cooldown goes down to 105 seconds, which you could get this. I wouldn't say you could fire this many times in this battle because it's still pretty high cooldown rate, but you could get it up faster than normal, which is a plus. And the same goes for his sub skill. He does 250% damage. At skill level 10, 
which to be honest, that's still not a lot of damage, we're not doing it for that, but his cooldown is at 95 seconds. With all that said, now I want to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts on Galatmon? Is he worth going broke for? Or are you going to save your rubies for something better than on the line? <laughs> Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please support the channel by clicking on that like button. And if you like nerdy content like this, then please subscribe because I try my best to post videos every day. <laughs> I'm unsuccessful sometimes, but I still try. <laughs> and make sure you hit that little bell icon so you can be notified when I do post new videos. This has been Two Can Dragon, and if I can, you can too. Bye guys.